Okay, let's start a little discussion on whole body radiation acute. We've already mentioned it and opened the door, but let's create a little scenario here. Uh, I consider myself a minor expert on this. So uh, here's the question. How many acute whole body rads will kill you? The answer is a couple of hundred. Of course, if it's only a couple of hundred, let's say two, three, four, five hundred, you're likely to develop a hematopoietic syndrome a couple of weeks later characterized by neutropenia and platelet depression. If it's much more than a couple of hundred, let's say you're already over a thousand, yeah, you'll get the hematopoietic syndrome, but wait another week or so and you'll have severe gastrointestinal problems as well. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, GI hemorrhage because of the effect of the radiation on the GI mucosa. And remember, uh, you still may even die from the hematopoietic before you get the gastrointestinal. Now, let's take significantly more than a couple hundred. Let's say definitely over a thousand. Let's say a couple thousand. This has happened in cyclotron accidents in which you get a massive, let's say well over a thousand acute exposure. Well, you're probably not going to get time to get sick two weeks later or three weeks later uh, with GI symptoms. You'll probably die within a couple of days, and it's mostly because of significant central nervous system depression. So that's how the whole uh, scenario of how dosage relates to uh, sickness. Okay, Let's talk about therapeutic radiation now. We know we said a couple hundred could kill you, but you know that a couple thousand are often and usually delivered to tumors uh, because they are focused to be just in one small area and well shielded to protect you from other areas. Nevertheless, uh, the uh, toxic effect of radiation therapeutic, especially if it's in areas which may involve uh, bone marrow, in other words, the uh, axial skeleton, the spine, the ribs, the chest, the skull, this is where the bone marrow is being made, uh, can occur if it's uh, widespread enough. And this is greatly enhanced by the presence of chemo, especially the alkylating uh, agents as well. Uh, we normally think of chemo as causing fatigue, nausea, vomiting, but even uh, radiation itself in a wide enough area can do it as well, even therapeutic uh, radiation. Okay. Let's cruise on to delayed radiation injury. We're not talking about acute exposure anymore. We're talking about people that have been exposed to significantly smaller amounts than a couple of hundred uh, whole body reds. And now, as weeks, months, years go by, they have a neoplastic and vascular effects. Well, this is uh, hopefully pretty easy, too. You know, the people that were exposed to a lot of... Uh, radiation uh, in the uh, uh, South Pacific Islands uh, with testing or uh, even in the people uh, close enough to be in the Japan uh, explosions, uh, as time goes by, developed a significant amount of uh, myeloid leukemias, hematologic malignancies, lymphomas, and especially breast and thyroid cancers in terms of solid things. In general, the hematologic malignancies are much more likely and closely linked with uh, radiation than the solid tumors. Nevertheless, I believe there was a study that showed with the thyroid uh, nodules and, of course, cancers as well, there was an extremely high correlation between people developing these that had been exposed to significant amounts of fallouts, but the effect was very, very long-standing, perhaps five, ten, or more years. Uh, the important thing is, is that uh, even though there's been mutations, obviously, that cause these malignancies, there's been no germline mutations noted in the progeny of these survivals. Now, vascular effects. Okay, radiation causes vascular damage as well, blood vessels anywhere. And in the acute uh, phase in the more acute things, or even though the, the delayed radiation injury is generally chronic, in the more acute effects, we're talking about endothelial necrosis and what we showed you before as fibrinoid necrosis. And the uh, capillaries with time may become thrombosed and obliterated and fibrotic. So a, a fibrotic 
uh, artery or even vein with no evidence of atherosclerosis or other things that might cause could very easily be due to uh, uh, radiation. And of course, if you think of radiation in terms of sun radiation, we know that if you get enough chronic sun radiation to your skin, you'll get atrophy of your skin, loss of hair, fibrosis, and scarring. That's a non-specific effect. Okay, let's look at the acute vascular effect of radiation. Do you see some perhaps fibrin or clot or fibrinoid change within this small artery? Uh, this is a classical acute vasculitis of radiation. You might call this fibrinoid necrosis, or there may actually be fibrin in it because it's acute and it generates a fibrin response. On the other hand, look, we have an artery here, and it's completely, the lumen is completely replaced with fibrous tissue. And look, there's no atherosclerosis in it either. This is a classic uh, chronic fibrosing uh, arterial effect of radiation. Okay. Let's get away from radiation and go to things you'll see every single day, a hundred times a day in the emergency rooms. And these are physical injuries now, another type of environmental exposure, so to speak. Uh, it's important you know the proper terms. Uh, and uh, you probably know these already, but let's diff uh, clarify a couple of things. An abrasion is a scrape, and it's usually... Uh, applied to the skin because that's where you're most likely to get scraped on your body. So in an abrasion, the superficial epidermis is torn off by friction or force. There may be a little bit of ulceration, bleeding, and so forth. Uh, but an abrasion is basically a scrape. That's the easy one. Okay, laceration, that's easy too. That's a cut. But remember, it's not a clean incisional cut. A laceration is different from an incision. And a laceration is an irregular, jagged tearing, whereas an incision is a clean cut, whether it's surgical or whether, you know, some guy puts a shiv in you in the uh, alley. A clean cut is not a laceration. It's an incision. Uh, a contusion is the most nonspecific uh, a term, and all that refers to is a blunt force injury that does not involve in skin separation, laceration, or abrasion, but just as a general bruise. And uh, sometimes there's a little bit of disruption and discontinuity of the tissue, but mostly it's just a uh, bruise uh, in which localized bleeding and uh, not much disruption of the surrounding tissue. Let's look at each one, okay? Can you tell there's a little bit of epithelial uh, scraping here? That's your classic abrasion. Here is something on the scalp that is not a clean surgical cut. It's an irregular separation of the tissues. It's a jacket. This is a laceration. And probably the most common type of injury, uh, blunt force injury, in which there's no significant anatomic derangement, but a lot of localized bleeding is your classical contusion. So what two things do we learn from this? A laceration is not an incision, and a contusion is mostly caused by blunt trauma. Uh, you may have been wondering, now that we're talking about all these uh, things that can hap happen to people before their normal death or uh, old age time, what the mortality rates are in the United States uh, for people between 25 and 44. These are people that are not in the cancer or atherosclerosis or vascular group. What did they die from? And as you can see here, they mostly die from things that are not related to medical illnesses. Uh, number one uh, cause of death, unintentional injuries. Cancer has been creeping up there. Homicide is big. Look at the difference between black and white homicide figures in males. Uh, I'm sorry, the, in the United States, I don't, I don't believe these are males. These are all people. It's 10 times higher in blacks than whites. Uh, there's a little bit of heart disease uh, in there, too, but it's pretty low on the list, and suicide is uh, almost as much as heart disease. So just kind of keep that in mind, that the uh, commonest causes of death in people that are young, let's say below 45, are generally uh, accidents, homicide, uh, suicide, and, of course, the thing you can't that is on the charts now and creeping up there was never there before is HIV. 
that's about in the same amount of uh, frequency as uh, homicide. So those are the uh, four big killers in young people, and I thank you very much.